platonic affection Use with chainsaw? his female friends. He wants to cuddle them and make them mixtapes and do nice affectionate things with them, which again, if you're in Seattle, pretty normal to like hang out oh. with your friends and maybe cuddle with them, maybe even shower with them. I have platonic friends that I've- uh, Just to be clear, I seriously doubt that's normal, even in Seattle, that you cuddle and shower with platonic friends. That sounds like something only a girl would say. <laughs> I thought there's no shot. Those guys that are cuddling and having showers with you are so deep in the friend zone, okay? They're digging razor blades out of their closet. No shot. No shot. That is a, um, that is a take from Britney's world. So of course I've like given up on this idea that I'm gonna get through to people to some extent because like they're just not curious. People are not curious. People want to pretend they're open-minded or that they're curious. And sometimes you're so open-minded, your brain falls out like Sneeko. And I saw my name in a suggested video and it was like, Britney Simon returns. So and I'm like, what is this? And it was like late night with Destiny. And I hadn't seen the full video. I just seen what I showed on my stream. And Destiny is literally talking about how there's no way you can take showers with your friends and that's normal in Seattle. Why in the world would I be talking about normies in Seattle? This is why I say Destiny's closed-minded. Why would he watch my content and think I'm talking about normies? Why wouldn't he say, oh, Britney's BDSM, Britney's sex positive, Britney does nudism. Of course, Britney's talking about sex positive nudists. Of course, she's not talking about normies in Seattle. But literally, Destiny's so close-minded that he literally sat there and he went, there's no shot, no shot. And I'm like, what? Sir, sir, but like, again, that's, how do people not at least know what bubble I'm in? This is just so interesting. Destiny also believes that you got married after within a month of meeting your husband. Oh. Like he, that's what I'm saying. Why isn't he curious? Doesn't he watch, why isn't he watching my content? Why isn't he curious about the bridge burning? Why isn't he curious? How does somebody with, who has so much potential, and this is what I'm saying, my old self, is like, he has so much potential, make him see. And then my new self is like, eh. <laughs> but if I can use this as an example to help to like have the conversation with you guys, I wanna do it. But I can't, how does he not see that he's not curious? He's not at all interested to see why I would say that. Why would I be saying that? I found that too and read the comments and had to leave out fast. They were firm in their perspective. He just didn't believe things Brit said were possible, even though before the they fell out. But like, that's what I'm saying. I'm telling him this is a lived experience so many people have. And people are like, no. And I'm like, I, there's books written on it. There's documentaries written on it. There's whole communities surrounding it. These people have families. Seattle puts on the solstice parade. Like Seattle government puts on events. Just because you're in Seattle and you've never been to those events doesn't mean they're not happening. Okay, I need everyone to be aware of a few things before I start. One, the cringe levels are gonna be insane. Okay. Two, I did not pre-watch these videos. I just kind of skipped through some of them. And, you know, um, we'll see how cringe they are. You know, we'll see if I say anything I shouldn't have posted on the internet. I am excited and also nervous to watch them with you. Please remember uh, that this was a person that I used to be. And if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be this person. So obviously gratitude, but holy crap, I am so anxious. This is from 11 years ago, okay? This video is called Self Image in 2011. I used to do these self image videos where I would like kind of keep track of how I've changed. And I haven't rewatched this one. I don't know what I'm gonna say. I know I'm filming in my parents' um, like breezeway area, which is now actually closed off. And you can see, okay guys, I need to explain to you this version of Brittany. Uh, 11 years ago, okay, so I'm in my 20s, obviously early 20s. And I'm wearing this Roma sweater. I don't even watch sports. I just liked the way it looked on me. Y'all, I don't even like sports. I just wear this sweater because I liked the way it looked on me. I also was going through my Tegan and Sarah phase. So I had this like lesbian haircut and I strained my hair every day. Okay. 
And I was living at home with my parents at the time. I hadn't moved out yet. And or wait, had I moved out and moved back in? I did move out of my parents' house and move back in a few times. I'm not going to lie to you. So, but like I had always dreamed of being like, yes, a scene queen, an emo girl. And I never felt like I ever expressed it fully to the extent of which I felt. You know what I mean? Um, but, you know, I did my best with what I had. Okay. Um, that haircut was such a moment. It was a moment. Let me tell you. So, okay, let's see what self-image 2011 Brittany was saying about herself. Okay. <laughs> Hi, my name is Brittany. And in 2011, I've never been more unsure of where I stand on things. I've never been more unsure about life, about God, about people, and about myself. But I am more comfortable and more whole as a person than I've ever been in my whole life. And for that, I am grateful. In this 2011, I am a published author, a YouTuber. Okay, everyone slow down. Self-published. A daughter, a sister, a friend. I have got $10 in my bank account. And for <laughs> Girl. <laughs> Once in my life, I don't have an ultimate goal for success. The only goal I have is to gain more information, to understand people, and to gain knowledge that I can eventually use to help humanity, help myself, to help people in general. I don't have that much to say about- Girl, hooded eyes and mascara are hard. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. I think the I think that might be the hardest part of the video, seeing all those curls smash. Girl. This Brittany could never have imagined actually having her natural hair. Never. Published author, stop. I will cry. Girl, why am I so 2011 Brittany? Stop. Myself, except to say that when I look in the mirror, I see a person that I've never seen before. And she kind of scares me. At the same time, she motivates me to dip my toe into the pool of unknown and to really just take a leap forward. And you know what? She kind of motivates me not to even dip my toe in, but to jump full on into this vast unknown and just take my chances. And for that, I'm grateful for the 2011 Britney. Let's go. Okay, that was a literally a minute long video. So, okay. <laughs> it's taking me back to MySpace, bro. Guys, I used to be so cringe on my, I was such a little neurodivergent freak on MySpace messaging all these people like, are you my people? Are you my people? Hi. Like, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing with your life? What's your life like? And I was just trying to find myself. Girl, thank God my old MySpace is gone. It's a cow sound for all of you who are like, what's that sound? I used to put animal sound. So my slogan, my dad came up with my slogan, BS you can believe in. My dad came up with this. When I started my YouTube channel, my dad was like, you should be BS, you can believe in her. Or was it my mom? Wait, it might have been my mom. It was one of my parents. They thought it was so funny. And I was like, oh, yeah, like BS, you can believe in. And then I would put animal sounds at the end of the credits. This was like my vibe for a very long time. For a very long time. Okay, this is 2011 Britney. BS, you can believe in. Tell me that's not cute, though. Britney Simon, BS, you can believe it's bullshit. You know what I'm saying? My parents thought it was so funny. That was 100% their thing. I did not even like everything. Like it was so funny. Like my parents genuinely encouraged me to do my first YouTube channel. They thought I was going to be like a conservative talk radio host. My parents would love it if I became Candace Owens or like Candace Owens adjacent. If I became like, you know what I'm saying? Like my parents don't care if I'm famous. They want me to be conservative and famous. And I'm just like mm. talking about BDSM out here and OnlyFans out here. You know what I'm saying? MySpace vibes. Yes, MySpace vibes. Oh, it gets, oh, just wait, girls. We're going to go into it more. Okay, let's go to the next one. And these videos are privated. Now, who didn't see the podcast today? Who didn't watch the podcast till the end? At the end of the podcast, I played this video, which I'll play for you now, because it just coincided perfectly with image and who I was and all the goals I attained. So let's Hello, watch this video. Today I'm this video is also only a minute long. <clears throat> Hello, ladies and dudes. Today I want to this hair was also I was doing I was trying to do like red and black and I was filming on a web on a on a Mac, like a MacBook. I was filming on the webcam on the MacBook that's built in. I was renting a room for five hundred dollars. I talk about it in the podcast. OK, you guys need to watch today's podcast. It's so good. Please like it and leave a comment for the algorithm. 
And I was obsessed. Again, I do the same thing I do now is I find clothing that I'm very comfortable in and I just wear it all the time. Like I have like sweaters I like. I wear the same clothes every day when I'm not, you know, like when I'm not streaming, I like change into my comfy clothes and I get into relationships with clothing. So like I wore this Snow White sweater like every day. In high school, I was in love with my cousin's sweater and I wore it literally. I stole it from her. She gave it to me. She let me borrow it. But I would wear it every day. And people would be like, do you ever change your clothes? And I'm like, "Uh -uh." I get obsessed with a piece of clothing and I never change it. And right now I'm into one of my hoodies. I wear it every day all the time. But this sweater I wore all day the swine. Britney's different hairstyles could fill a whole hairdresser catalog. Oh, just wait. It's so true. You want to talk about borderline? Y'all want to talk about borderline? Changing my hair every week. Bleaching, dyeing, straightening, fake curling every week, girl, to shift with my mood. A breakup? Shave my head. A breakup? Dye my hair. A new job? Hair. Talk about borderline. Talk about decorating your life. And I don't mean decorating your room, though. That does have something to do with this video. I was contemplating this. The other day, I was examining some art. And I thought to myself, I would love to live in that room. I would love to have this painting so I could examine this room, reflect upon this room, and imagine myself in it. And I realized I had spent so much time and money and effort into buying art or pictures or saving pictures online that represented what I wanted without ever investing in what I wanted. And so with this new room, this new place, I've decided to invest in things that would contribute to the room and the decoration to create what I want. You know, throughout life we sometimes do that a lot. A lot. We read books that, you know, have characters that live the life we want, but we never bother doing it ourselves. And for some of us, it's because we're afraid to live the life True. we want. And so we live it through other characters. Some of us live it through our friends or family. And I just decided I'm not going to do that anymore. So instead of investing in art that represents the room I want, I'm going to create the room I want in the room I live in. I'm to share that idea with you because for some reason, it actually made a difference in my life. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day. <laughs> this is 11 years ago Britney guys that same Britney spent hours in that room crying herself to sleep self wanting to unalive herself all the time calling her mom and being like I feel like I'm dying I feel like I'm dying I feel like I'm dying I'm dying I'm dying and to my mom be like Betsy you're not dying I was like I'm dying I'm telling you I'm dying like I feel like everything's a wreck I'm working two jobs I don't understand like I feel crazy and I undiagnosed borderline right I'm like still years away from getting diagnosed like this Brittany was hanging on by a thread every day of her life but she was still fabulous and still did her hair and still did her makeup and was trying she still made content I even made content I will never show again on YouTube that definitely got me canceled a few times. My version of dealing with the world, my sense of like dark humor was not welcomed. Some videos were complete fails. Um, some videos I'm like super embarrassed about obviously because I'm like, oh, I know what she was trying to say and I think like the right people would hear the message but like mm, the videos were like, oh, that's hard. Maybe, maybe I'll show them on the Discord sometime because like I know the people in the Discord would absolutely understand how bad they are, but regular YouTube viewer, like no offense, like I don't know who's watching this video, y'all would die. I would die from like the, oh, they're so intense. They're so intense. What type of cancelable content? Like, um, like really dark humor content, like, um, content where I was just like, um, it was so dumb, like. You said the N-word, huh? No. I was never that person. I've never, like, never that person on the internet. Um, I Oh, I said the F-slur at most because, you know, queer communities. But I'm not the N-word person. I'm the dark humor person about, like, assault. That's the person that I am. Like, I made some really dark references to assault before I was assaulted. So I have some, like... Keep in mind, like, young millennials, our old millennials, our humor was so dark. Like, Gen Z could never. Gen Z could never. Millennials from my generation, our jokes were like South Park on cocaine. They were so dark. And I'm like, oh, my God. What? Oh, no. Shane Dawson type humor? Darker. Darker. Like, Shane Dawson, but, like, he... Like, 
like with a serious tone. Like imagine Shane Dawson with like a more serious tone. You know what I mean? It was like very specific. Now, I don't know all of Shane Dawson's work, so I don't know if I'm referencing the right kind of jokes he would make. But like, you know, I knew some Shane Dawson, right, in the in the day. Okay, ready? So that was this one, Decorating Your Life, Self Image We Watched. Okay, I have no clue what's going on in this video, but this video would have been 12 years ago, and I look like this. Oh, God, wait until I show you this look. Yo, wait until I show you this look. Okay, this... Am I in Texas in this one? There was a point in my life where I lived in Dallas for three whole months. Is that this era? I'm wearing hair extensions, which was definitely that era. And I'm wearing... Honestly, I'd still do it today. I am wearing... I bought this plaid shirt and it came with a belt. And I'm wearing the belt as a headband. And I used to wear flowers in my hair all the time. Are you ready for this? Oh, fuck. Okay, this is called getting older. <laughs> Yo. Hello, lady. Yo, look at this girl. Yeah. Um. What was I doing in Dallas? I was living with a friend who wanted me to come over. I've got so many stories about that time. I've got so many stories from that time. I am shooketh to my core. I have a crazy story from that time. I'll tell you that story because I'm pretty sure this is Dallas Brittany. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is Dallas Brittany. I'm pretty sure. I, I, let's listen to her because she'll tell us. Oh, my God. Okay, this is 12 years ago. Getting older is the name of the video. Hello, ladies and dudes. So today we're going to talk about getting older. Oh, wow. Wow. That was my intro. That was my, would you guys like to see that again? It went by so fast. Would you like to see that again? We're going to, we're going to watch it again. Hello, ladies and dudes. So today we're going to talk about getting older. Okay. Yes. Do you see this, Brittany? Do you see her? She was so proud of her hair. Do you know how long it took me to get this hair? Look at my room. Look at Dragon Ball Z lunch pail. Love that. A little surfboard from one of the beach areas with my sister. Love this. Look at this. I was so proud of myself. Look how proud I was of myself for getting this vibe. I was, you have no idea. You have no idea. <laughs> when I was about 10 or so, my aunt who lives in Iraq and who rarely visited visits the United States was here in San Diego. And I remember she walked through the door and I looked at her and I said, oh my gosh, I want to look like her when I'm older. And the reason I said this was she's a woman who embraced her aging and also who in the Middle East, they just don't cut their hair. So she had the most gorgeous long hair and it was silver beautiful and she had it in a braid. And I remember seeing that and saying, I want to have that. I want to have long silver hair that I can put into a braid and I can be proud that I've aged and that I can show off how gorgeous my hair looks when I'm older. And as I grew up, I realized that in the American tradition, women usually as they get older, cut their hair shorter. Um, women usually, you know, tend to get Botox or do anything to make them look younger. And what I really want to talk about today is this idea that women and men have as they get older, mostly towards the women. I've met a lot of girls, some of, you know, oh, I have Lord. a friend who, as she ages, she always pretends she's a year younger. So if she's 25, she's 24. If she's 23, she's 22. And she'll tell people, you know, and if no one's there to correct her, then... I, you know, she'll go on pretending she's 24 if she's 24. I'm sorry, please notice the bracelets on my wrist. This was also one of my favorite sweaters I wore all the time. Okay. Rain says, I love imagining baby Brittany putting this together and feeling so cool. I love her. Legit felt so cool. I felt like I was on top of the world. Look, I feel like that today though. Like, am I going to look back on this era and think like cringe? Because like, look guys, I feel just as confident in the way I look today as that Brittany felt then. That Brittany was so sure of herself. And look, that's what that's what growing up is and aging is and exploring the self is. But I feel just as confident today in how I look as that Brittany felt that day. 25. And I've just never understood this idea, this idea that aging is, is horrible or women, when they reach 30, they've lost it. I've met so many gorgeous women as they get older and people who embrace their aging oh. is just gorgeous to me. I have nothing against plastic surgery, but I always feel like you should embrace the fact that when you do it, if you do, like say to people, I do it because I want to look younger or to just embrace the fact that you are getting older and that that's a beautiful thing. Cause for me, so this is still 2011 Brittany, right? This is 12 years ago. 
This is, yeah, this is still 2011 Britney, right? And this look was very popular. I see your comments on Discord. This was the look for my age group. If you're in high school between 2004 and 2008, like this was peak, right? This is what I was aiming for. How long did it get to, uh, how long did it take to get this hair right? I need you to know how much pomade is in my hair right now. All these little strands on my forehead took so much pomade from Sally's to stick together. And I am telling you right now, I felt so accomplished to get my hair. And then of course you can see like the extensions, like I, like there are so many extensions in my hair because my hair was like, I, mm -mm, mm -mm. wow, you talk the same. <laughs> Oh, wait. I get older and I'm like, survived one more year longer than I thought I would. Because, you know, I always had this idea I would die a little younger just because of, I don't know, I'm not that reckless, but I can be. And so now that I, you know, I'm getting older, I'm kind of excited. You know, I'm 21 and it, it, it's not very old at all. 21-year-old <gasps> Brittany, virginal, thank you. And um, I'm kind of excited to see what I'll look like at 25. Honestly, my whole goal is I really want to see what I look like at 60 and at 80 and 130. Like, you change. You look different. You have you have the stages in your life. And I want to be able to, to revel in those stages and to glorify. You know, I would never want to be stuck as a youth. I'd, I'd want to get older, you know, and I'd, I want to die. And I want to experience that cycle of life that makes life so beautiful and worth living. So what I want to talk to you guys about today is just to reflect on that idea. Um... Brianna, please. You actually were cool though. Please sit down. Okay. Sit down. I, I literally really appreciate the effort this girl went into, but I never felt like I pulled it off. You know, those scene girls who really just pulled it off. I, I probably feel like that way. Even now I feel really good and I feel pretty and I feel like I'm doing what I want, but I always feel like I never quite pull it off the way that I would ideally want to. And I just don't even know if that's true, but you know how you see yourself and you're always more critical of yourself. This Brittany always felt like it was never good enough, which is so funny because obviously like it's, it's good enough girl. Like what are we, what are we stressing about? You know what I mean? Yeah, and how do you feel? Do you feel pressured um, to look younger, to be younger, even when you are young? I've met enough girls who are in their early twenties and are trying to look younger. And I'm like, you want to look 15? Like, what's what's your deal here? Like, do you guys ever feel pressure for that? And I know for men it might be totally different. So speak to me, dudes, how you feel about needing to look younger. I know everyone always says men look, you know, better as they age. Hello, George Clooney. Call me. <laughs> George and Clooney? So do you see how I reference? I'm the same Brit. I am so consistent. Did I not reference George Clooney as the hot older man earlier in this stream? I am consistent, if nothing else. I might change a lot, but I hope you see core Britney in this girl. I hope you see core Britney in the consistency of this content, yo. So I guess you guys might feel less pressure to look younger, but please let me know, and I will see you guys next video. Ooh, ooh, girl. Mm -hmm. I loved this Britney. So I'm pretty sure this was Texas Britney. I'm trying to look forward and see if there's more Texas Britney. Oh, we're going to Orange County Britney. Is there Texas Britney in here? I think this was the closest to Texas Britney time. Texas was crazy, y'all. Listen to this. I was chilling in San Diego with these homies who were quite controversial in their own right. Like I said, South Park on crack. And they were came from like conservative backgrounds mostly. I moved to Texas for like three months. And I was kind of on the hunt to find the maybe guy that I would have sex with for the first time. Because, you know, I hadn't had sex. And I was a, a lesbian then because, you know, bisexual wasn't as much of an option and then look at me my pansexual ass in 2023 but um you know what is gender um and I remember being in in Texas and I would sleep with this guy in his bed as like you know non-sexual in my head and he couldn't do it like you want to this is what when men tell me like you can't be with a girl and have it be platonic it's these kinds of men which is why I'm always sussy baka of these kinds of men but like he's in bed we're cuddling and he's always trying to get more. And I told him, I was like, hey, I don't want to have sex with you. I'm not interested in you. I don't want to kiss you. I just want to be chill. And this is when I had been exposed to BDSM already, but I wasn't years into the lifestyle. I didn't have exactly the skill sets to deal with these vanillas. These vanillas be out here pushing boundaries. Let me tell you. So I'm sitting in bed or we're like, we had been sleeping in the same bed for a long time because I went to go live with him in his one-bedroom apartment. He's like, I'll, I'll help you. It'll be fun. You can come to Dallas. Uh, he worked for like a pro-life movement at the time, gag. And so 
I get there. And after a while, he kept trying to push himself onto me. And I said, okay, I don't want to sleep in the bed with you anymore. I'm going to sleep on the couch. And he was like, why? And I was like, well, because you keep doing that thing that men do sometimes where they, they push the boundaries. And I don't, I'm not interested in you, bro. We either have to be chill and be platonic. And again, I've met so many men who can do this. So many men who can do this. So this is not like, oh, men are the problem. Like men can be platonic and they can be graceful and they can be awesome. And he was like, oh, get, the story gets worse, y'all. I see your comments. How are you so trusting? Just wait. So then, um, and I knew him, I knew him from my California days. He had just moved states. So I, I kind of went with him and tried to, tried to make a life there. Did not work. And so, okay, so I go to transfer to the couch and I'm, I'm going to sleep on the couch now because like, I feel like we can't put down healthy boundaries. And he was standing in the doorway as I was laying on the couch. He looks me straight in the fucking eye. And he goes, one day, I'm going to drag you off that couch, pull you into this bedroom, and show you how a real man makes love. And I was like, um, I'm literally a virgin. I'm literally telling you I'm not interested. You've already passed pushed boundaries, and I've already felt like my consent was violated. This was pre-assault. Okay, this is Brittany pre-assault. It was disgusting. It was like, I looked at him. I was like, oh, I'm out. I called my mom. I was like, I'm leaving. Before he even realized it, I packed up all my stuff and got on a plane. I was like, no, ma'am, absolutely not. But like, that's what I'm saying. I have had so many conversations with people. I've met so many good and bad people. And I just remember thinking like, what are you doing? And then what did you do? He slept with my married friend and then she broke off her marriage and then they got together. So <laughs> anyways, I'm not friends with either of them anymore. I hope they're happy. But like, that's the thing where these men don't understand. Like, I was like, that's grapey, bro. That's some grapey ass energy. And I'm like, not interested. But I think people just thought that would be sexy or he thought that would be hot or he just didn't know. But I couldn't take the chance. Like, I just genuinely couldn't take the chance. So I just packed up my stuff and left. And he was shocked. He came home while I was packing up my stuff. And he was like, where are you going? I was like, girl, I'm getting on a plane and I'm leaving. Like, the way you talked to me the other day, like, absolutely not allowed. Like, absolutely not allowed. And then that was it. Never talked to him again. That was it. That was the end of friendship. Like, I don't know if people hear themselves. That's what I'm saying. Men will talk to me like that and be like, how could she think so badly of me? And I'm like, do you hear yourselves? Like, I don't think people hear themselves when they talk. They will literally say things to me and be like, how can Brittany think this of me? And I'm like, ma'am, do you hear what you're saying out loud? And that's what I'm saying about the world. It doesn't even hear itself. When it when it tells the world who it is, they're like, why don't people like me? And I'm like, um, ma'am? What are we talking about here? Um, your comment says, I went through uh I went through really similar recently just because we want want the world to be a certain way doesn't mean it is. I would love to trust men, but I have learned that there's a reason why they say things about men. I will say it's obviously not all men, right? I've met so many amazing men in amazing spaces, mostly in sex positive spaces, mostly at BDSM dungeons that were really, really great because alternative men at least have alternative tools. And this was like a Christian boy, right? This is like, I'm a good Christian boy. And I was like, bro, no. Um, if you thought that was sexy, he'd probably uh, grape and not consider it grape. I think so too. I think that's the problem. When they say there's a grape culture, I think that's what they mean. I think he literally thought that's what I wanted to hear. I think that's what he thought I wanted to hear and I would find sexy. And I'm like, no, that is not what I wanted to hear. I am a virgin who's being such a stickler for who I have sex with the first time. And you think that's going to win me over? That's the last thing I wanted to hear. And the guy I did end up having sex with was really great. The, the guy I ended up choosing to have sex with was really lovely. And I'm so glad I waited and picked him because not only was he gentlemanly and sweet and such a messy little situation, but um, yeah, no. So interesting. Okay, so after, after Dallas, I came and eventually moved in to Orange County, which is where I actually found the guy I first had sex with. And I was in that room renting a room. So that was after. So I'm not going in chronological order, P.S., but anyways, you have all these lived experiences. It's hard not to get jaded, but it's possible. And you have to like learn. That's why I say, you know, um, 
people on the internet will think like, oh, I got cheated on. So I have like the worst, like I have the, like a really emotional take in association with cheating. I don't. It's not a big deal to get cheated on, but it's also a big deal. In the same way that this guy didn't grape me that night, but if he had, and that's why you have to be diligent. Look, the worst thing about cheating is the betrayal of the trust. Just like if I came home and you spent all my money. Just like if I came home and you painted the house without telling me. Like, what are we doing here? When you violate someone's consent, it should be shocking. Now, I don't think once a cheater, always a cheater. I don't even think all men cheat. I married a man right? Like some of my best friends are cheaters. So like, I don't need to have like, oh my God, Brittany's so traumatized from her cheating. Brittany has values and y'all are just jealous. I swear to God, when I hear criticisms about my work, like, oh, Brittany's just so emotionally like tied to this thing that happened to her. First of all, I have emotions about things. I'm not a sociopath. And two, things should matter. People should feel uncomfortable around people who are so lax about breaking your consent. That is what people, that's what I'm saying when people say, oh, what's the big deal? He cheated. What's the big deal? He pushed her. What's the big deal? He forced him down. What's the big deal? He went along with it. Do you hear yourselves? You allow so much when it should never have been a thing in the first place. And that's what I look at people when they say like, oh, Brittany seems really emotional about this. Shouldn't you have some strong feelings about grape? Shouldn't you have some strong feelings about consent violations? But if not, like, I guess it's just different bubbles, right? Okay, let's keep going with this video, which I wanted to show. Oh, why is this YouTube video freezing on me? This video, Hello, I'm, ladies uh, and I'm very excited to show you. Hello, ladies and at this time, we're going back to the Puma era. The Puma era, oh no, not Puma. What am I saying? Roma era. Puma is a different brand. We're Roma era. I'm at home living with my parents. This is 12 years ago. I hopped around a lot, guys. I've moved like 40 something times, right? I moved like 40 something times. So I've moved a lot. Okay. So I have this era of Britney. And she, this is the same era as 2011 Britney, who was like doing the self image Britney. But she talks about assisted which I covered in a panel just a few weeks ago. And I wanted to be shown to the world that I have had the same consistent views and that I have been thinking about this for a very long time. And dude, today we're going to talk about assisted <laughs> I'd always been adamantly against assisted suicide because I perceived people who wanted to commit as uh, people who would do it. I've had to deal with in my life and I've noticed that the people who honestly want to commit to get the job done and those who try to commit or scream that they're gonna do they're actually using that as a method to cry for help taking that into consideration I in no way shape or form judge those who want to commit to who do commit who feel like is the only way out not that I'm condoning it but I'm certainly not condemning it now one of the most interesting things um, that I never realized about myself is that I've never considered any of my ideas assisted Now, for those who know me, I'm deathly afraid of ever becoming neck down paralyzed. I'm, I could live without my legs, I could function without arms, in my head at least, but the idea of having no uh, ability to move from the- Um, excuse me, why the green eyeshadow? Because green eyeshadow was my vibe. I also thought I brought out the green in my eyes. As you guys can see, I have hazel eyes, thank you all. Um, and the green eyeshadow was very glittery. So that's why green eyeshadow. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. That was you. Yes, that is me. That is me, girls. <laughs> You're welcome. The neck down <laughs> is just a no-go. The idea of being um, <clears throat> paralyzed to the point where I'm in bed and can't do anything for myself. I, I, I literally think of all the methods of getting, you know, biting my tongue and drowning my own blood type thing. But Thanks. then I always thought that I would have in my will <laughs> that you guys can pull the plug. But the problem is, is that those... Stop it. Are we noticing the thin eyebrows? Okay, y'all need to understand something about those eyebrows. Okay? Okay? You need to understand. It was the vibe. Everybody had thin eyebrows when I was growing up. Okay? I don't... I've... Ne okay. This is like an 80s home video of Britney... I'm enjoying this too. This is this is nice to watch it with people because honestly, I can't watch videos of myself. Like by myself, I'm just like, wow. But look how far I've come. Look how far I have come. And also like this Britney was really searching. 
this Brittany is having the bubble epiphany of like, wait, maybe I'm pro su assisted suicide. Isn't that like amazing? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Mm. People who are in those situations can't pull plugs because there's nothing plugged into you. You're just paralyzed. And so I never thought of my idea to cop out as a Sisitsu. So when we talk from a legal aspect, it's actually kind of interesting about the options we have. I just want to throw that out there, guys. I know this is kind of a heavy thing for a Monday, but if you guys could give me your opinion, maybe you've had experiences with relatives who have had uh, terminal cancer, some sort of horrible diseases, um, Alzheimer's. It's always interesting. I, I watched oh. my grandma have Alzheimer's for many years and I never knew her until after the disease had taken over. So I never got to know the woman I've heard so many stories about. And I wonder if she had had the choice if she would have vouched for something like assisted suicide instead of being in a bed for almost two decades. And I know that sounds horrible and she has recently passed away, but it's something that I- Wow, did my grandma die 12 years ago? It doesn't feel that long, but it must have been, wow, wow, wow. Think about, because I don't think I would be content with having like Alzheimer's and sitting in bed for that long. It, it's just, I don't think I'd be able to do it. So, but then I realized I don't really have the legal option of True. offing myself, which is kind of funny. Wanted to talk about that today. I know, again, it seems a little heavy for today, but if you guys can give me your opinion on this uh, from a moral standpoint as well as a legal standpoint i know a lot of people get wrapped in the moral but if we could talk even from a legal standpoint and what that means i would really appreciate it thank you guys so much for watching and i hope you have a good monday <laughs> let's do this Hello ladies and dudes, interesting comments the last few days. I blame TJ the Amazing Atheist for this. FYI, if you are very new to my videos, if this is I one was of the first TJ videos you are seeing, it might not make sense, not but you might as well it. stick around. The last few days I have had an influx of subscribers, I blame it on TJ, um, thank you for that. And uh, the last two videos I made have been responses to his video, so if you just stumbled across my channel and decide to watch- Please note that I'm wearing a Disney Cars watch. Thank you the last two videos they won't really make sense unless you've seen his videos first as they are responses so what I've gathered from the last 500 new comments is um I've got three sets of people watching me I've got older individuals in their 40s and 50s who um, are calling me kiddo and sweetheart and teaching me things which I appreciate you are older and I would hope that you have more knowledge and can teach me things and then I have these middle school high schoolers that are like I love you Brittany you're everything I love you da -da -da -da. I love you guys too but not in the creepy way and I would hope you know with all your cute little exclamation marks and smiley faces you understand that I don't know you and at the end of the day I can be your best friend and I think that's really important because I understand like I feel like I can see myself in these kids because when I was 15 and you know being emo and struggling I wanted someone who would totally listen to me all the time and you guys email me uh, a lot and um, I can't be your best friend. I know I've made a video about this before. Watch it if you- Wow, this Brittany had much better boundaries with parasocial relationships than mid-twenties Brittany. Because I had some problems in Seattle. Because I was like, oh, we're adults now. We can all meet up and be friends. Um, um... You need to, but remember that. I can't be your best friend. And then I've got this new influx of 20-somethings. And hi, 20-somethings. We are BFF since we are all 20. Here's the deal. You guys have accused me of thinking that I am special. When in reality, we all think- Oh, this is the same criticism I get right now. I get the same criticism right now where people are like, Brittany thinks she's so special. Girl, we all think we're special. That's why we think we can get away with shit. We're special, huh? The last 30 years of American special. society has told us to tell our kids that they are special. We've babied our children. We, Our parents have babied us. Not my parents. My parents are different. They're from Iraq, so they, they they're Iraq, kind of Iraq, not Iraq? Oh, interesting. But American society has persecuted parents for even hitting their kid on the hand, for telling, you know, when your kid falls and scrapes their knee, my parents were like, are you okay? Good. Get up. Other parents, they take you, they put a band-aid, they kiss it, they read you a story, they make you a pussy. I don't think I'm special, because I know I'm not special. Oh my you're not special either. Don't think you're so cool. You guys leave me comments accusing me of thinking I know everything, when in reality you sound like you know everything by your pompous little statement. If you guys are new, that's fine. I will forgive you that little bit of a mm, yeah, snobbiness. But if I mean, this is the same problem we run into right now. This is the same problem we're running into right now. I end my sentences with a period and y'all think, okay, this is the same thing we run into right now.
same struggles, girl. Life is such a cycle. You guys have been watching me for a long time and then accuse me of thinking I know everything. We got an issue. So I want to focus on the new people. Hi, new people. Here's the deal. I want you to first realize that you are not fans if you end up liking me long enough. You are individuals who want to exchange information and knowledge. That is the point of this wow. channel. This is not a this. I do not want any fan pages made. I don't want people to be like, I love you, Brittany. I'm your biggest fan. That's creepy to me. I'm not here to sell you an ideology, a product, or a political system. I'm not here to sell you in. Yo, this is like, I'm starting to see why I ended up like, I came full circle, y'all. I came full circle. I'm basically saying the same stuff now, but I came full circle in a different way. I mean, I'm obviously more of a business now, so like a little bit of like, you know, boundaries. But obviously, like, I kind of came full circle. I kind of, yeah, I kind of get it. I'm like a more evolved version of this. Anything. I'm not even here to sell you America, which I love, but still I'm not here to sell you it. I am here to exchange information with you. I'm here to learn from you. I'm here uh, to hopefully teach you something, make you think of something new. See, I don't even want to tell you that I'm teaching you something because that makes me feel like I'm telling you that I know things that you might not know, but in reality, I hope you know what I know because I feel like I know nothing. And like Socrates said, all I know is that I know nothing. And yes, I will wow. quote philosophers as if I know what I'm talking about, but that's only because I've read their specific writings and I did enjoy them. Okay, so with all that said, the last point I want to make, because here I am, I'm just throwing information out to you. You can take what you want or you can reject it. Here's the last point. I don't put all my eggs in one basket, and that's why I can't sell you any kind of idealism. I wow, I am literally this version, but like more. I'm like the updated version of this Britney a little bit, right? Where I'm trying to say to you, like, I don't like have one bubble and I can't explain it to you in that way. And I'm just trying to say that everyone's like, a wow, I'm like an updated. I'm such look at me being a consistent queen. OK, I always tell people I love Rush Limbaugh, America and Christopher Hitchens. Christopher OK, everyone slow down. We do not like Rush Limbaugh. Anymore. Ew. Christopher Hitchens. Really great. You should read his readings like God rest his soul. He wrote a really interesting book as he was dying. Um, but man, I don't, okay. These aren't the three things I would name now. I don't even live in America anymore. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> For Hitchens, the extreme atheist who wrote God is not great. Rush Limbaugh, the extreme conservative Republican who says all liberals are crazy. And America, the country that thinks she's the shit, but really isn't. I love all three of these people. I think they're funny, intelligent, uh, lovely. And I think they, for the most part, move with this idea of bettering the world. Now, if Rush Limbaugh turns out to be crazy, I'm okay with that. If Christopher Hitchens turns out to be a child molester, okay. And if America turns out to be crazy and it bombed itself on 9-11, which I don't think it did, but I'll have to accept that because I don't have my eggs in any of those baskets. Amen, Please girl, amen, a man. girl, you know what she's trying to say right now? She amen, she a, yeah, third generation evolution, let's go. She's basically saying, She's so good. This girl is so good. 12 years in the making, girl. This is 12 years. See, I don't rewatch my content. This is 12 years in the making. She's right, though. She 12 years in the making. I, I still think this. This is why I can be friends with so many weird people because I'm like, yeah, I'm not surprised. Like, it was on Sneeko's bingo list to be this Sneeko. I was like, yep, that was on the bingo list. It was on everyone's bingo list to be who they were. That's what I'm trying to say. I can like you and still think you're sh bro. Because like, eh. People are going to people. Humans are going to human, bro. Wow. This Brittany knew. She knew because she hung out with everybody. I had so many diverse friends. I still do. Like, I just know. Like, people are going to people. They're great in some ways. Did you see Hassan and H3H3 -H3 fighting? Did you see Ethan and Hassan fighting? Same thing. That's probably not going to last. Ethan and Hassan got into it because, again, they don't fit in the same bubble. That's why Ethan always comes off so funny to me because I'm like, he has no idea. He has no idea. He's not as progressive as Hassan. He's not in the same bubble. But Ethan started to convince himself he was. No, bro. Even Hassan lets Ethan sometimes like convince himself he's in the same bubble. No, bro. No. Oh my gosh, your old haircut reminds me of the lesbian YouTuber Ar Ariel Scarcella. Ariel Scar Scarcella and I were friends at this era. In this area, she YouTube used to have custom pages and Ariel made mine. She made my, and she turned out to like go kind of more, um, 
I don't want to say right wingy, but like she and I definitely deviated. I'm so much more progressive than her. Like I, I went progressive and she went more centrist. And so we deviated our, we ended our friendship years ago, but we deviated from our friendship. I remember when I was friends with Stevie Bobby, crazy bitch. That girl is so crazy behind closed doors. Jesus Christ, she's crazy. And she and Ariel were fighting. I was like, hey, I'll mediate. Let's do a live show. And they're like, we're not mediating. We're not doing a live show. And I was like, you guys are all crazy. These girls are all crazy. YouTubers are the craziest people who've ever existed. I mean, myself included, except again, I'm happy to have the conversations. I genuinely am so boring. I have nothing to hide. Okay. I'm so, such a boring person. Like, unless, unless it has to do with the consent of other people. Um, but like, I just, I don't, okay. But these people all be hiding skeletons and that's why they don't talk about shit. See this Brittany knew this Brittany knew people be humaning. She's like, I don't want to be friends with none of you in a real way. Cause it's true. All y'all about to turn on each other. Ooh. God's sake. One, do not call yourself my fans. You were individuals exchanging information with me. Enjoy my videos for what they are. Me talking to a camera. I'm not special. You are <sighs> not special. None of us are special. True. We are just individuals grouped together. And we now, okay, let me see. Your individual consciousness is special. Like, I will never know another Bryson. Like, Bryson and my, like, Joy. Even Joy, I see you. Like, I will never know another one of you. I'll never know another one of you. Okay? I look at Bryson. I know I'm pointing fingers at you. But, like, and I think, like, this is the only version of this consciousness I'll ever know. And how cool is that? And in that way, you are so special. I will always have a memory of this human being that I've had an interaction with for the rest of my life. Like, I'll be 90s or 90 years old and I'll be like, Bryson, even if I don't know Bryson, because he'll go on and move on in his life. Like I will know that consciousness, right? Like I'll know of that person that I used to know. And that is what's special. But just like me, we're all just floating little energies in the universe. Like we're not literally special. We're only special because we put value on each other. And I put a value on that consciousness because that's like a really great person, right? So it's kind of like this Brittany knew what was up. We are just individuals grouped together. And we've all been put on this little planet called Earth, and we have to decide how we're gonna go about our day. Mine is exchanging information with people, as I do love to learn, and I'm assuming others like to learn too. Obviously, not everyone likes to learn, but I'm hoping to find those who do like to learn. Now that I've rambled for God knows how long, I will end this video. If you guys have any questions, especially those um, who are new, ask them. I will answer your questions. I will answer your comments and I will get back to you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next video. Dun, 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 cute. Oh, cute. Holy crap. <laughs> so cute. So funny. Like seeing an old version of yourself. Wait, Ariel's return has been a uh O -oh face. What? I don't even know what she's doing now. I've literally not Googled this girl in like four years. So interesting. Isn't life so interesting? I'm just trying to say, girls, I have tried so many bubbles and I've gone to so many places. Man, my allergies really suck today. And um, I've tried so many different things, but I always come back to I'm just interested in like the individual and I'm just interested in what's happening. But also, I know we have to come together as groups. I know we have to celebrate things in like a religious, spiritual way. Like, did you guys watch Kidology's video today about hair? It like kind of made me sad. It's like such a different lived experience than I have with my hair. Like, I just made a podcast about hair. And then she made a video about hair today. And it was just such a different lived experience. Like, just the most different lived experience about hair. And I am like, it is what it is. Like, I can't. You know, her experience is so valid. It's so valid. But she is without a community in relation to hair. And I just realized, like, at least I had a, and have a community in relation to hair. Like, I have friends I can talk to right now about the relationship we have with our hair. And it can feel really, really like I'm being seen. But I don't think Kid had that from the way she describes it. And that's so hard. Because, again, not that she needs it, but it does make it so she's – she doesn't have that community reach. Look, I love a bubble. I love hopping in and being seen. I can't be seen fully, right? If I go to my community to talk about my hair, they're just seeing one aspect of me. And I think that's really beautiful. Um, and I have many of those aspects. I think that's what I'm trying to say is that we all are multifaceted. 
And in the way that Kidology doesn't have a relationship with her hair, she does have a relationship. She can have a relationship with other people who don't have a relationship with their hair, if that makes sense. And I think that's important that we're not all going to have that relationship with our hair, but you can also bond with people who don't have that, right? Um, yeah, I like going into my gay bubbles. I love having my female audience. I love having men who are very cool. I love having non-binary people. I love having my side of the internet here, which is a bubble, right? Like we don't have a lot of conservatives in this audience, guys. Like it's not like we're hanging around with like devout Muslims or Catholics or something. That's not who's in this audience, right? So even we attract a certain amount of people, even though we want an individual audience, we want a diverse audience and we have a really diverse audience. It's also an audience that would want to watch Britney. And that's not a lot of people. So in that way, we're still a bubble, but hopefully never a box. Hopefully just something you can pop in and out of, something that's fluid and something that you can kind of see through and it doesn't make you feel trapped, right? Uh, love watching you through the years. I can see a bit of how you've related to hair. I, for that hair podcast, had reached out to people. And some of the people I reached out to when I asked them like, oh, hey, do you have a relationship with your hair? They're like, what do you mean? Like, is it hard to do in the morning? And I was like, interesting. Like some people just don't have a relationship with their hair. So even asking the question doesn't even make sense to them versus the two girls who showed up in the video, literally both of them right away were like, oh, do I have something to say? Like such confidence. They're like, yes, I have something to say, which is just, again, it's not to alienate. I say this, it's to say, you need to find the people that vibe with you that get you. Because again, like how we talk is shorthand. Like if people watch my content and literally think I'm ever talking about normies, like that is such a weird take. That's like watching a queer channel that's just for gay people. And you're like, oh, they must be talking about straight people right now. It's like, what? Why? It's just so interesting. Nero says, yes, this question doesn't make sense to me. Beautiful. Wonderful. Love that. That's why when you go on a date and someone asks you that question, like, what's your relationship with your hair? And if a person answers a certain way, you can say, okay, this person's not having the same relationship with this and I need someone who does. That's a great reason not to have a second date. We still have two more videos. This video <clears throat> is called, What Do You Owe Society? This is 12 years ago. Brittany, can't remember where I was when I filmed this, but I think I might be at my parents' house maybe. I don't know. I don't know exactly where this is. But this video, oh, look at that haircut. Mm -hmm. Let's go. What do you owe society? I have no idea what this Brittany is about to say. I'm not responsible for what she's about to say. I have not seen this video in 12 years. Where my camera is. So if you're wondering why the resolution sucks, I don't know where my camera is and I really hate it. So I'll have to find it. Otherwise, I'm recording this on Mac and I apologize for any fuzziness that you should experience during the viewing of this video. <laughs> And dude, so today I want to talk about a couple things that's been on my mind, specifically, what do I owe society? Now, I am a registered Republican. I consider myself- Whoa, Republican Brittany coming in. Republican Brittany coming in. Watch out, everybody. I do not know what she's going to say. I do not know what this girl is about to say. Republican Brittany was very Republican. Oh, Lord, I might get canceled. <sighs> Of a conservative and um to be honest with you it's mostly the social the social issues that i guess anyone can really debate about i know when i sit here you know when it comes to economics or it comes to foreign policy or it comes to how we treat um people who blow us up sure, i'm sure, very sure, sure. straightforward with how i think we should treat people now because i don't believe that peace can be attainable in the world um on a whole scale because I mean I like I've said this before it's hard enough keeping peace in your own family oh. and trying not to fight with people let alone oh. trying to create peace in the whole world not that oh this Britney's still based though true I say that till now I say that now old Britney and new Britney both struggling with tech you know what joy true this Britney true that's true. I still think you can't create world peace, girl. Create peace in your family first and let me see you do it. You should ever give up that dream, but that you should realize what power you have to really attain it. With that said, I've had a lot of people recently close to me um, tell me that I was immoral and tell me that I was um, creating a worse world for people, specifically children. And I'm a very big adamant um, supporter of children's rights and for children and for the benefit of kids. So mm -hmm. I'm a very big believer that adults should do what they want to do, assuming that you're not, your lifestyle, whatever it is, isn't harming any kids. Now, 
this could be debated on what lifestyle is good and what lifestyle is bad for kids. You know, I've ruled my life trying very hard to be some sort of a, um, a solid, stable individual who knows what she wants and knows what she wants for the world. And um, it's very hard sometimes to go back and forth. Like, I know I meet people who are so stable and know exactly what they want to do and know exactly how the world should be run with no questions asked, um, mostly because they're following someone else. And here's the problem is when you try so hard to attain individuality, which you have to be a conformist even if you're an individual. It's just true it works. base. But even if you try so hard to do that, it's hard to follow other people's words when you're trying to figure out your own because you don't want to be blindsided. Now, the dilemma with that is that you're, you don't know everything. Wow, she really don't pause this girl. Sometimes you have to follow other people's words. I mean, do people owe anything to anyone? Do we owe anything to society or should we just live purely for ourselves? A Man, girl, look at this difference in fashion though. This natural hair never looks so good. AKA survival 101. Should we literally just AKA. live for ourselves in total anarchy? Now, I admire people like Dr. Laura, who's a radio host, <laughs> if you guys don't know who she is. Oh, and a lot no. of people hate her. And I think a lot of people hate her because they can't do what she says to do. And neither can I. I mean, I'm not even a quarter of... Okay, for the record, Dr. Laura got some racist problems. I have a video about that later after this video, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it must be after this video. I've seen Dr. Laura live. I've read all her books. And Dr. Laura, I denounce because she racist. You know what I mean? But like she challenges human beings to be the best they can be and to sacrifice mm. um, for others Oof. to a point of a T. You know what I mean? Like Republican Brittany I think wild. that's why people hate her is that she challenges us to be the ultimate best. And that's why mm. I try very hard to kind of mirror that and try very hard to challenge myself to be the best, even though I fall short 99% of the time. But... It's the idea that I'm able to eventually... Oh, wait, you're right. Shadow <clears throat> B says, I think YouTube used to have a time limit to each video. Baby Brit needed to get as many words as she could at the time. You're right. There was a time limit. I do remember when videos were then 10 were allowed to be 10 minutes after this. You're right. There was a time limit at this time. That's so funny. When I was a kid, my mom listened to Dr. Laura all the time, and I used to cry no more, Dr. Laura. Stop. I've even called into Dr. Laura. I've been on her radio show. Yeah, I denounce Dr. Laura. Maintain that um, based on someone's advice or based on um, her theories of life. And I think that's a beautiful thing. I think a lot of people become so wrapped up in their own hate about the world or about people or you're Republican, I hate you. You're Rush Limbaugh, I hate you. You know, I've been on Rush's show uh, a few times and, I, you know, I've talked to Snerdly, who's his screener. And oh, you know what? They're some of the most beautiful people I know or huh? I've spoken with. And you know what? Uh, not true. I also denounced this. This was, this was, uh, idealistic Brittany who didn't know of the corruption of talk radio. This is innocent Brittany. This is innocent Republican Brittany who was not yet betrayed by talk radio hosts. This was innocent Brittany who thought everybody cared about what they were doing and everyone was consistent with their values and people actually cared. No, they're liars. All of them are liars. This is innocent Brittany. It isn't, you're never going to agree hundred percent with someone. But what I think we can do for society, I think what we owe society is trying to take a step back and trying to create a world that's actually worth living in. And I know that sounds so cheesy, but really, I mean, right now we're in this, in America, we have this majorly like government intrusion in our lives. No oh, matter brother. how many, if you're a Republican or a Democrat, there's government intrusion in your lives and I hate it. And I wonder, you know, you wonder what are taxes for and you wonder why are my taxes going to certain things? Well, I think it's our duty to kind of shape up and kind of look at the world and kind of take into consideration what actions on our part are benefiting or um, not benefiting the world. I guess my whole point is that we owe society the chance to survive in an okay setting. Not necessarily a totally peaceful or a totally like war. We owe society nothing. Hungry kind of a setting. But I think we owe to society to try to put ourselves, take a step back and look at what we can do to benefit society as a whole. Wow. That was a lot. Republican Brittany be wild. Republican Brittany be wild. Well, you know, good for her. Okay, after Republican Brittany, there was this Brittany. And I just want to show you this Brittany because look at the aesthetic. I'm literally showing you this Brittany mostly for the aesthetic. This was six years ago. So that was 12 years ago. This is six years later. Look at this aesthetic. To it. So I didn't back it with like a bunch of facts or I didn't articulate myself in the way that I would have preferred. 
But overall, back in the day, I was a humanist and I wasn't a feminist. I didn't identify as a feminist. I didn't think it was necessary. Obviously, now I do think it's necessary as I also... Um, I also see myself as a gay rights activist being a queer woman but not a straight rights activist though of course I am inclusive and I involve straight people in my in my fighting for the rights it's just gay rights are very specific because we need very specific things like you know by the way I was nannying this day my family's let me like record videos and like uh do my stuff when the babies are sleeping so there's a baby sleeping upstairs right now and I was like I'm gonna film a video real fast which was a big deal 10 years ago so that's a thing what I learned from that video, though, was even though TJ promoted it, and even though I said the same thing he did, it has, like, so many thumbs down because I was wearing a bikini. And people told me they wouldn't take me seriously because of what I look like. And that was a really interesting idea to me because I was surrounded by naked people who were intelligent, who were doctors and lawyers and accountants, who were teachers and educators, who... Okay, I need you to know the septum is my fave. Okay, it was so bad with my allergies. I literally could not function. I was in so much pain with my allergies. It was so hard to be this Brittany. I was in so much pain. I loved that symptom. I remember getting it in October. I remember loving it, but I literally could not survive with it. Though we're naked, we're having these political discussions with me because nudity isn't about seeing other people naked. It's about being naked yourself. And it's about realizing that clothes are this silly concept that we we do and evolutionarily speaking are amazing because when it's cold outside i have no body hair to protect me so i wear a sweater do you get what i'm saying i had been around groups who didn't girl i tried so hard to get some lips look at my lips look at my non-existent lips look at this girl over drawing her lips and trying so hard i say this with only love she so badly wanted her lips to be seen <laughs> why didn't god why did god give me a booty and no lips. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've been doing squats. And let me tell you, my booty be looking popping. But, oh, I went through a lip, uh, liquid lipstick stage in my life. So this was it, girls. I didn't care what I look like for so long and still took me seriously that I forgot when putting myself out on the internet that I was welcoming a slew of people that didn't grow up like I did. Now, when I first experienced this years ago, it was hard for me. Um, I didn't understand why people had a hard time having a discussion with me. And now that I'm older, I'm a little bit more prepared for it. Um, the Amazing Atheist and I used to be good friends. Like, I have his number in my phone. We used to talk pretty frequently. Um, and then we kind of stopped talking. And a lot of that had to do with myself. I made that decision. Um, I was going through a lot of traumatic family stuff. I had my 16-year-old brother living with me, and I was trying to raise him off a of very minimal salary. And, um... I was feeling attacked and I was feeling like the burden of a single mom without being one and it was really difficult and I had all these people telling me that like I didn't have any struggle as a woman and that nothing was different being one and I realized that wasn't true for me and so I felt a need to identify as a feminist and I still do and I think that there are resources that need to go into defending people who are minorities and the people who need to do that are the minorities like i do think as a woman it's my job to defend myself as a man i think it's your job girl i overdrew on the corners of my mouth i look like a literal clown i mean the shade is gorge but girl i cannot get over the way i did my lips and i think it's our look job as a eyebrows. collective society to then help and boost each other it's a mess but one of my biggest regrets at the time is that tj and i i love this sweater though i had sort of a conversation that didn't go well because I felt like he was anti-feminist for the wrong ethical reasons but I didn't have the time or the resources to back up my conversation with him and to make a video he had actually welcomed it which was amazing of him genuinely I know plenty of people who I've been like please have me on your show to debate feminism and they're like no oh god no and I and I felt like I I loved that TJ was welcome welcome to that concept that idea I really appreciated it um but I didn't have the time or the resources, and now I kind of do, and now I really want to open up that conversation, and I want to talk to you guys, not because I want to bully you on the internet, not because I want to win this debate, but because I want to have a discussion. I think there are so many things that I disagree with, with like, I've been watching, you know, TJ, obviously, I watch Repsion, and then I started watching um, the Sargon of Akkad, or Sargon of Sargon, I just started watching him, so I, his name is like, weird to me. Wow, wow. So at this point in my life, I just started watching Carl, which is crazy because then later in life, I collabed with Carl. Like Carl and I know who each other is. We're in totally different, in totally different bubbles. But like, wow. Right now. Um, 
and he made a video on Steve Shives. And oh my I God, was- Steve Shives. Y'all remember this progressive bubble? This is a completely different time of YouTube. Steve, and who's also an atheist turned Whoa, feminist. Turned- this is a completely different time on YouTube. Fighting, turned what fighting- is this, 2010 YouTube? Wow. minorities kind of guy and it's interesting to watch the 20, disconnect 2013 and what i think this? that all of these people have good th- yeah Brittany always only wanted a discussion true i only ever wanted to discuss ideas with people and the problem is, is that people who go into philosophy or psychology or any of these things they usually want to win they usually want to be right so there was like there's the struggle i even have now where i'm like i just want to have the conversation dudes and everyone's just like yeah, they still. I still run into the same problem now. Like, I will always run into this problem, I think. Because even amongst, like, friends and people get bored. People want the contention. They want the battle, which I get it too, absolutely. And plus, there's a lot of vulnerability with having these conversations. And you also don't want people to think you're saying something you're not saying. But wow, this is really nice for me to watch again. I'm like, oh, wow, I remember this time in my life. Things to say as well as flawed things to say. But I also say. forget. I think here's, here's what I want to talk about. It's okay to be respected in one area of your life and your work and not others. It is okay to respect TJ the Amazing Atheist and even Repsion and all of these people in some aspects while still disagreeing with them immensely and fundamentally. You know, Christopher Hitchens is one of my favorite people of all time, RIP. And he was a great journalist. He was an enthusiastic atheist. He was a well-informed person. He had his flaws also a beautiful writer. He had his flaws though, right? He didn't always say everything perfectly, nor did his belief systems always reflect my own. But I cannot sit here and pretend that he wasn't an intellectual and he wasn't fucking on top of it. And I think that is the problem that I am seeing. And I think that's something that I am, I'm at fault for. You know, these are personal, life-altering discussions that we're having, right? For a lot of us, we are struggling to stay on top and for a lot of us we feel discriminated against. Even the men who I think act out against feminists just feel attacked and so they feel a need to then lash out. I think this is a combination of hurt feelings and misunderstanding but also a a difference in fundamental like belief systems and I think it's important that we actually acknowledge that. You know, um, the Sargon of Akkad, I keep feeling like I'm saying his name wrong, but he said something to Steve Shives, which I thought was really interesting, because Steve was like, why are you anti-Muslim or Islamic? Islam, which is very specifically important, the religion. And the Sargon of Akkad said in one of his videos, because we're atheists. And it was an interesting disconnect, because of course, as an atheist, I'm anti-religion. But of course, as a, as a humanist and as a feminist and as a person that believes we should live in harmony, I can't sit here and discriminate against one religion and not another. And I also can't say that you don't have the right to believe in a god. I can hope that, you know, without proof that you wouldn't follow in the steps of an invisible being, but I can't sit here and say that destroying a billion people's foundation of life and living right now is logical. You know, I dated a guy, this was a mistake who at one point said we should just kill all religious people and the world would be a better place. That was the vegetarian. The vegetarian was like, I don't, we should kill people. And I'm like, uh, that seems contradictory. And I sat there, I'm like, no, I was a religious person until I was 19 and you wouldn't have given me the opportunity to learn and to be better and to be an atheist and like <clears throat> to grow in myself. And no. I think that's hard for people, right? We. <laughs> I often hear from people like, it's not our job to educate the racists, but it is. It is totally your job. Nah, fuck them. Let everyone die. No, okay. No, but seriously, it's kind of funny. I am somewhere in between, somewhere in between where like, obviously, you know, use your spoons how you want to use it. The world's just incredibly racist and annoying and homophobic and transphobic and all these things. So yeah, don't waste your one time on earth educating the racists. Like how boring, but also... If you want to, great, because who better to, you know, educate them than non-racists. And also, it's just like, it's so, so interesting. Like this Brittany was, I remember when I put out this video, I was really hoping that I had finally learned how to make a change. 
I was finally hoping that I could get through to people. I was finally hoping to bridge gaps. I was like finally hoping to do so much. And now you ask me why I hand wave everybody because I just, you know, how many times am I going to go through the cycle where I'm like, maybe today's the day. It's like, girl, I don't fucking either get it or you don't get it. Okay. You either get it or you don't get it. And at the same time, sometimes I'm shocked at how people can hear me talk and not get me. Like literally, how do you watch my content? It's, it's because they don't want to pay attention and it is what it is, right? Like, I cannot believe how close-minded some people are and they don't even see it in themselves. It's amazing. It's just the most amazing thing in the whole world. But also, it's because they can only see me through their lens. So, like, who am I to judge? It's like their bubble. I get it. Like, literally, how do you hear me say I've taken showers platonically with my friends and think this has anything to do with normal people? Of course, this is queer and sex positive and nudists I'm talking about. Of course, I'm not talking about normies who can't even like show a tit because they might have a heart attack. I'm, of course, I'm not talking about normies that think like watching porn is cheating. Of course, I'm not talking about normies who literally can't even talk about an open relationship. Do you think I'm taking platonic showers with my friends who can't even think that like trans people are real? Do you think those are the people I'm taking showers with? Platonic affection Use with chainsaw? his female friends. He wants to cuddle them and make them mixtapes and do nice affectionate things with them which again if you're in seattle pretty normal to like hang out oh. with your friends and maybe cuddle with them maybe even shower with them i have platonic friends that i've uh, just to be clear i seriously doubt that's normal even in seattle that you cuddle and shower with platonic friends that sounds like something only a girl would say <laughs> i thought there's no shot those guys that are cuddling and having showers with you are so deep in the friend zone, okay? They're digging razor blades out of their closet. No shot. No shot. That is a, um, that is a take from Britney's world. So of course I've like given up on this idea that I'm gonna get through to people to some extent because like they're just not curious. People are not curious. People want to pretend they're open-minded or that they're curious. And sometimes you're so open-minded, your brain falls out like Sneeko. But sometimes like you think you're open-minded. Literally, who do you guys think I'm quoting at the beginning? Oh, I'm just gonna, literally, I saw a title on my analytics. I was like looking at my analytics and I saw my name in a suggested video and it was like Britney Simon Returns. And I'm like, what is this? And it was like Late Night with Destiny. And I hadn't seen the full video. I just seen what I showed on my stream. And Destiny is literally talking about how there's no way you can take showers with your friends and that's normal in Seattle. Why in the world would I be talking about normies in Seattle? This is why I say Destiny's closed-minded. Why would he watch my content and think I'm talking about normies? Why wouldn't he say, oh, Britney's BDSM, Britney's sex positive, Britney does nudism. Of course, Britney's talking about sex positive nudists. Of course, she's not talking about normies in Seattle. But literally, Destiny's so close-minded that he literally sat there and he went, there's no shot, no shot. And I'm like, what? Sir. Sir. But like, again, that's how do people not at least know what bubble I'm in? This is just so interesting. Destiny also believes that you got married after within a month of meeting your husband. Oh. Like he, that's what I'm saying. Why isn't he curious? Doesn't he watch? Why isn't he watching my content? Why isn't he curious about the bridge burning? Why isn't he curious? How does somebody with, who has so much potential, and this is what I'm saying. My old self is like, he has so much potential. Make him see. And then my new self is like, eh. <laughs> but if I can use this as an example to help, to like have the conversation with you guys, I want to do it. But I can't, how does he not see that he's not curious? He's not at all interested to see why I would say that. Why would I be saying that? I found that too and read the comments and had to leave out fast. They were firm in their perspective. He just didn't believe things Brit said were possible, even though before the fa they fell out. But like, that's what I'm saying. I'm telling him this is a lived experience so many people have. And people are like, no. And I'm like, I. There's books written on it. There's documentaries written on it. There's whole communities surrounding it. These people have families. Seattle puts on the solstice parade. Like Seattle government puts on events. Just because you're in Seattle and you've never been to those events doesn't mean they're not happening. You know what I mean? It's like amazing to me. Destiny is just a coomer brain. So he thinks everything's about sex or leads to sex. 
I guess I saw that some of that, but had to turn it off because I can't. It's so, it's such a bummer that I'm like, what? He's open, but there's bias because the beef. Well, no, it's not. He's not open. He admitted he doesn't watch my content except on stream, but then he doesn't think about it. Like, just think about who you're reviewing. If you're reviewing a devout Muslim and they're like, oh, I eat pork, that's when you should say, oh, that's weird. If you're reviewing a sex positive nudist or like nudist adjacent person who's BDSM, who has pl like platonic friendships that do all kinds of adventuring, who's read all these books, why would you then think like, oh, yes, that's that's a lie. She's telling a lie. And I'm like, I. And it makes it's. what? Why? It's just, again, the bubbles, the whole thing. So like I've gone through so many stages of my life where I'm like, why can't people understand people? And it's because they're not curious. That's my newest and latest theory. I refuse to believe people are curious when they don't engage in the conversation or ask questions. Where is their curiosity? If somebody literally came to me and said something that was enough curious. Now, if you want to admit you're not open-minded or curious, like I said about magic, like I'm not very curious about magic. I'm not very open-minded to magic. See how I can say that out loud? I'm not very open-minded to magic and I'm not very curious about it. I'm happy to say that. I'm happy to say that. Why can't these people say that? Why, why, what are they so afraid of saying? Why can't they say, oh, I'm just not curious enough? I think he just genuinely misses the points on things. Maybe. Let alone cultures like Japan where community bathing is, so, is also not a big deal. Literally. Like, what are we talking about? That's one of my least favorite types of people. Nobody thinks this or that way. I, me too. My least favorite. Like, I don't even like them. The people who are like, no one ever thinks like that. That's not a thing. I'm like, bro, there's 8 billion people on the planet. There's 8 billion people on the planet. Ah, uh, I think there's a difference between being privately and publicly curious. Being publicly curious is risky because you don't want to stand out or feel stupid. Maybe. Yeah, it's funny how he'll watch like a bunch of streams on like conspiracy theories. But I, I think the problem is, is like if people engage in my work they would literally have to be open to the fact that the way they run their life isn't the only way to do it. And they all think they found the best way. So he even said something like, um, like everyone fights in a relationship. She's lying if she says they don't fight. And then he said something else, which I thought was like, he said a lot of things in that stream. I didn't watch the whole thing. But I was like, I don't know why people don't hear me when I say this. I always define words myself. And I say, this is what a fight means to me. And then I say, this is the level in which it's inappropriate or appropriate. And even my partner talked about it. Like we have yet, and I don't think we'll do this because it's, it's not within our values, but we don't turn on each other. We don't cuss at each other. We don't get angry at each other. We get angry with the situation. And if it's within reason, we might say, hey, I'm pretty angry with you right now. Is that okay? Can we have a conversation about my feelings? But we're not going to turn on each other. And I think that's what I, I mean when I say we fight is like we no longer are a team. My parents, no matter how much they disagreed and argued growing up, they never fought. They never turned on each other. They never cussed at each other. They never hit each other. They never cheated on each other. In my, I, in my world, a fight in relation to dysfunction. Ooh, we'll transition to dysfunction, guys. Let's transition to dysfunction. In my world, when you fight, like if you say, oh, I fight with my husband all the time, super red flag like that is not normal or not healthy rather <clears throat> uh sage says i think neurodivision people are more likely to use words and not attribute additional meaning beyond its context which may be why people's under don't understand you like when you call sneeko open-minded yeah but like see how sneeko to me is curious and open-minded but it's not my fault his brain fell out that's normal dude you know what I mean? That's what happens. But when you're so close minded, you're like, that doesn't happen. That's never a thing. It's like, what? What are you, my mother? Like, it's not a thing because I've decided it's not a thing. That's crazy. He thinks that because I've been taking showers with my friends my whole life and just continued into adulthood. I'm just saying. I think it's the difference in language and context as well. He seems to be discussing very pointed issues and can disregard the context of what specific kind of convos you're having or he can't. He can disregard. My Vietnamese friend said she showers with her cousin and she helps shave her poom poom. Shocking. Interesting. See, everyone be different. Everyone be different. Mm. 
I just don't think him in the community just doesn't want to hear you in good faith anymore. Yeah. Well, I feel like they never really heard me in good faith at this point, or maybe they did. I felt like there was a point when we were vibing. Like, I do think there was a point when we were vibing. I don't know what changed. Like, I don't, I still to this day don't understand why he was that mad at me. And the reasons his community keeps giving, I just don't believe them. It doesn't make sense. In an open-minded world, how are we not having these conversations? I still don't get it. Also, wait, I saw a comment from his community that made me laugh so hard. So in my bubble, you might not marry a military person because they're not going to be there for you and the kids because cheating is very high and they often have to get deployed, right? So that's really common. I have four military brothers. One of my brothers, the request the in-laws had was that he didn't get married to their daughter until after he was done being deployed, right? Because deployment is a huge reason like military marriages don't work out, right? And somebody in Destiny's Reddit was saying um, like, oh, Brittany thinks uh, Destiny isn't a present father. Does she also think like military fathers aren't present fathers? And I was like, yes. Yes, I do. And that's what I'm saying. I'm very consistent with my thinking. I was just watching the ultimatum and literally they were like, what about truck drivers? In the ultimatum, the truck driver kid, the kid whose mom was a truck driver, literally has trauma and PTSD and self-harmed himself because she was never around. Kids need present parents. Every study shows that. It isn't saying you're an evil person for joining the military. I'm, there, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying if you have the choice, don't do it. I'm saying if you have the choice, be present in your child's life. If you have the choice, if you're in a privileged position where you're a millionaire and you could live near your kid, that might be a good choice. But I'm not saying you're an evil person if you don't do it. Most people aren't making decisions that are really within consideration of their kids as much as they think, right? So again, I'm my logic is consistent. I just don't get how people don't know this except like bubbles, right? Like their culture, their background, their understanding. DGG never knew you. The fact that Destiny never watched your videos to this day is such a major point that isn't mentioned enough. His whole view of you is based on his short viewing of specific videos. I agree. And DGG reporting, absolutely, right? It's a bummer. It's a bummer. I just like, I'm so shocked sometimes when people are like, I'm open-minded. <gasps> there ain't no way, bro. There ain't no way this is real, bro. Nobody does this, bro. You think on a planet of 8 billion people, nobody does this, bro? That is shocking to me. That is so close-minded. Okay. I need to pee and then we're going to talk about dysfunction. I got a comment from somebody and I really want to go over it. I think it'll be really, really good. Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool 